In this video, you're going to learn how to speed up your render times in Blender. So we're going to start with 4 minutes 17 seconds as our first render. The first thing you can do is enable your fancy schmancy graphics card if you have one. Use CUDA for NVIDIA, OpenCL for AMD, and Optics if you got an RTX card. You can also set your CPU to help your graphics card. Under render properties, I can change from CPU to GPU and render. And with this one, we go from 417 to 146. I can change the render slot so that I can compare my results with the next one. Next, you can go to your light paths and lower your total amount of bounces. Some people choose to go really low, like one or two, but you can't go too low or else you end up reducing your amount of indirect light too much, which really lowers the quality. Here I use two to show you what I mean. Comparing the 12 to the two, You'll see that the 12 looks quite a lot nicer because there's light hitting everywhere. In the 2, you'll even notice that there's no light coming in from the back windshield. For this render, and probably most others, I found that the lowest you can go without really losing any quality is about 5. So I wouldn't go any lower than 4. You might need a little bit more for a more complicated render, such as water or something. As you can see, comparing the results, they look about the same. Next, we can go to the compositing tab to let the robots help us. Shift A and search for denoise. This is the Intel denoise in AI. And we'll just let this help us remove some noise. We'll need to go to our passes and enable our denoising data. Plug in the denoising albedo to the albedo, the normal to the normal, and the noisy image to the image. And then we can lower our sampling. In a real render, you'd want to go higher than this. And you definitely want to go higher without using the denoiser. I can also enable this little clock so that the noise is randomized if I am animating. As you can see, there's some ugly noise in certain spots, such as there. Now in a second, the compositor is going to fix it. And now it's noiseless. Now, and in this case, it looks pretty good compared to the higher sample version. Again, you're going to want to use higher samples than this normally, especially if you have a more of a textured surface than this smooth car paint, because that detail will be smoothed and blurred away if you rely on the denoiser too much. Now for the car, this next technique isn't really a good example, but for objects that don't move, you can bake all the information, lighting and its color and stuff, into a texture. This is most useful for animations because the bake will probably take longer than it would take to just render the one object out once anyway, but you don't have to render it later. You just have to plug your bake texture into an emission shader. Emission shaders shade way faster since Cycles doesn't have to compute any lighting information there. And now this looks like how it will look in Cycles. Now this technique is kind of flawed because for one, it won't work for anything that's moving because the lighting would change. It can't create shadows on an emission shader for objects that are animated over it and then would normally cast a shadow on it. And it won't get reflections that will show up at only certain angles. 
but this technique can work well for unanimated background elements that have rough, unshiny materials. And here's what happens when you try to use it on a model that has overlapping UVs. Now in Blender, you can have multiple UV maps, so that's not really a big problem. Now, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That'll be a huge help for my channel. Thanks for watching.